Land. Uh, today we're going to be doing uh, drawing, painting, drawing, painting with uh, gouache. These are a set I got from a shop we have here called The Works and it costs three quid for 12 um, little tubes. And when you're just experimenting and trying out, I thought they were really, really good value. So that's why I opted for these because if I thought if I didn't get on with the gouache, 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 then I thought it's probably best not to waste too many pennies on them. And they actually surprised me with how lovely they were to use. Um, I took them out of the pack because I cannot keep putting them in and out of the same slots. It's just not me. Um, yeah, I found them really, really lovely to use. They're very vibrant in colour. They're along the lines of acrylic. They work very similar to acrylic, but they dry with more of the matte that you get with watercolour. So they're a bit of a mix of both. There's three grades of gouache. You get um, one type that you can't really reactivate once it's wet, uh, once it's dry, sorry. Uh, you get like a matte version, um, which is most of the versions, and then you get like a, a graphic version. I know there's one called acrylic gouache, which I think is that type. Anyway, today we just use your standard, box standard matte finish gouache on this painting that I did. And it's based on a paper cutting template I made some time ago now which again was based on your traditional Nordic, Swedish uh, paper cutting where you would fold it in half and you would cut it with your shearing shears and decorate your home with it. Um, but I really, really like the very graphic uh, one colour you know it's very flat it's not shaded and I love that about folk art and I really really enjoy being able to do multiple colors but without it being a, a real headache on the eye but yeah these paints when as I say when you're just starting out or when you're just having a bit of a play like I was they, they were actually quite surprising at uh, the brush I was using was useless it didn't do me any favors at all and I couldn't get that really nice clean line that I wanted to achieve um, so it's a little bit raggedy around the edges so I probably will try again at some stage but um, I was being very good to try and stay in my lines because I wanted it to be almost like it was a print like it hadn't been painted I don't know whether that's a bad thing or a good thing but that's the look I wanted to achieve if you're new to my channel um, I was a well I still am graphic designer by trade I went back to university at the grand old age of 29 and decided that I wanted to get my degree because it's something I've always wanted to do so I've always loved very strong graphics and some of the old paintings are quite like that especially the folksy in the nordic style and um, even the old sort of world war posters some of them are really quite graphic and they're very almost vectored and i really love that when it comes to design i have quite a wide range of likes when it comes to artworks and lots of things appeal to me but there's something about just flat basic colors put together and real strong dynamic shapes that it just floats my boat it really does float my boat and that's where I think my passion for graphic design and, and doing all the vector work and things like that really um, sort of pushes it over from graphic design into my artwork and if you've seen my paper cutting templates if you don't know by the way I do sell them I'll put a link to my Etsy shop in the video below um, yeah you'll see in my paper cutting templates what I mean there are a few airy fairy type ones but all the rest are very quite strong graphically and you'll see that convey oopsie daisy I spilled some water um, and it's not the paper you want to spill water on either so yeah, I found that once I changed my brush, um, I used a, a synthetic brush. I think you'll find you'll probably get on a lot better with that one purposely meant really for acrylics. And I found once I did that, I didn't have to load my brush as much. And the joy of the gouache is that ideally you, you shouldn't have to water it down. Um, you don't really necessarily have to with acrylic, but 
I love the fact that it dries matte and that's you can now get matte acrylic but I don't know I think the whole experience I think that's the main difference between when you start trying different mediums you know you're painting with gouache and you want the final effect to look like gouache and it's such a stupid word <laughs> That's such a silly. How do you say it? How do you say it? I say goulash, like goulash, I suppose. It's very weird. Anyway, the colour palette I chose, I tried to not go too much, but I wanted to have a bit of variety in there. And I wanted to do opposing colours on the colour wheel. So I was looking at yellows, greens, purples, um, blues, and trying to stick within that range. It's very common in folk art to have these types of colours. You can get quite subtle folk art, but then you get um, the real strong colours as well. And I felt when I originally did the orange that it was too wishy-washy. So I decided to go in with this much stronger orange. And I'm glad I did actually, because it really makes it pop. Um, had there been a little bit more of a vibrant purple, I probably would have gone for that. but. You're limited with your colour palette and I, I don't I didn't want to go down the road of colour mixing and all that sort of stuff I wanted to experience it literally straight out the pot so yeah overall I was actually really really happy with how it came out I felt sometimes on the yellow especially actually and I don't know whether it's because this was a cheaper brand more than likely obviously you pay for what you get if you want a really good decent quality paint you have to pay for it the yellows and the greens I felt I had to actually do a second coat whereas the orange the stronger pigment I didn't really need to but you can see here the difference it made just by having that second coat and the joy of gouache is you shouldn't really have to do that you should be able to just do your one coat I know I'm on dark paper so that makes a difference but this type of folk art works so so well on dark paper if you followed my live feed, if I remember, I'll pop a card up now. Um, I did an, uh, an owl version using the gouache paints. And again, very similar, very folksy design, almost Art Nouveau actually. And that worked out really, really well. So if you want to see how they work in real time, it's worth popping over to the live feed where I did that. And yeah, just give that a watch and, and see how you get on. Now I did cheat. It was based on the paper cuts and template as I said so I did actually print this off on the paper just so I didn't have to bother drawing it out. Is that cheating? It's not. It's working smarter not harder. I used my Posca pens and some acrylic um, metallic a lot of them were pens on top because I wanted to add some detail but I didn't want to be there forever putting it in with paint so I decided to use my Posca paint pens and uh, in the end these acrylic pens just to add those final touches and final details and I do think overall it worked really really well and I was really happy with it so yeah um, as time progresses maybe if I do more then I will look at buying some more expensive gouache paints but for the time being this did the job and I was quite happy with the outcome let me know in the comments below what you think if you've enjoyed this video if you like my picture hit that thumbs up it is looking for a new home so if anybody wants to buy it let me know and yeah don't forget to hit the subscribe button hit the bell button to be notified of when I go live every Wednesday and I shall see you guys in the next video bye